Christopher W. Smith, the Occupy Honolulu. Uh, I had one question. From what I understood from the city, that this is supposed to help 100 people for the Housing First project, for the initiative, correct? So if we're only helping 100 people, and we're taking the funds from Housing First for something that's temporary, that still has no guarantee if we're even able to start this, how are we going to put that money back into Housing First to make sure that that initiative is able to keep going? The funds that we're using are going to run the transition center, operate the center, and refer to the housing first. Yes, we have used a small portion of that total $3 million appropriation, and we're committed to asking for another $3 million in the next year's budget. So there will be still sufficient funds to support the 100 individuals in permanent supportive housing. Okay, so for 100, 100 people, you're suggesting it's going to cost a total of $6 million? No, I'm saying for the first year, it's 25000 The average cost is about 25000 per person for an entire year. Okay. And we're going to be starting this project, the program, in November. So we're, we're nine months into this fiscal year. And then next year would be an additional, because you need to continue to support the same individuals for another year. So it would be an additional three mil next year. But it's $12,000 on average for a person to live in an apartment. Correct. So the... Us taxpayers are paying twice the amount to deplete our community resources even further to do something that's much easier, you know, in the in the short and long term. Is it Christopher? Right? Yes. Okay, Christopher. It's twenty five thousand of which per person per year. Twelve thousand pays for the rent. The thirteen thousand pays for the case management and the supportive services. It does that assessment. It determines whether these um, individuals need mental health support substance abuse support, other life skills training, and all of that is wrapped up into that same 25,000, the housing and the supportive services. Now, as that process goes on, and we work with these individuals, many of them are going to be disabled or have mental health conditions that are going to enable them to use other benefits. So they may be eligible for disability insurance or Medicaid and other health care benefits that are going to take the cost of that $13,000 for wraparound services and reduce it down to a lesser amount in a future year. Okay, okay so that $25,000 per person. Re okay, well, that, okay, well, so it's $13,000 more on top of what taxpayers are already paying for, correct? Because these services are already here. The problem that I see with the, the way everything's ran within the government, it's in several different buildings. And like uh, for EBT, for instance, right, they only help 12 people a day. And if somebody drops something off in the box and you stand in line, you may not, even if you are one of those 12 people, may not even get help. So you've got people standing in line for months waiting to get that service because people are cutting in front of the line or doing whatever because only 12 people are helped. What I'm getting at is it's, it seems like uh, we're wasting more funds for 1% of the chronic health, uh, or actually 10% of the chronic health homeless and 1% of the actual homeless that's on the island. Because we have 9,500 people that's homeless. And, and I'll, I'll ask uh, Director Rodeo please to wrap this up. If you want to discuss further, we can discuss after the meeting outside. I want to yeah. make sure that everybody has a chance to comment. I don't, I don't think I'm asking hard questions. So well, I think they're I'm, easy I'm gonna questions. Ask, I'm going to ask her to answer the question. Help. I'm going to ask her to ask, answer the question to wrap it up so we can move on to the next one. Okay. What the reason we're funding Housing First. It is a national best practice. It's evidence-based. The, the method you talk about where it's piecemeal and in different agencies has not proven to be successful. And that is the very reason we are wrapping around into one contract. One provider is going to be doing both the housing and the services because that is nationally been proven to work better. Right. So that answers but your question. But for 100 people and not the 9,500 that's on the island. Christopher, we okay. are the city and we have what funding we have. And we appreciate that I support. I hear you have $40 million that's been allotted to it. And so far you want $6 million to help 100 people. We can talk about